Hello everyone, welcome to Mastermind. Today, let us learn more about physical geography by solving few more multiple choice questions. Let us get started now. Which of the following statements is or outro regarding oceans? The oceans comprise more than 70% of the Earth's surface. Oceans are a source of food, fish, mammals, reptiles, salt, etc. Oceanography is the science of oceans. This is a fairly simple question. So here all the three statements are correct. Therefore, the right option is option for A, B and C. The oceans comprise more than 70% of the Earth's surface or 140 million square miles of Earth's surface. Oceans are also a source of food, fish, mammals, reptiles, salt and other marine foodstuffs. The study of oceans or the science of oceans is known as oceanography. Second question says, which of the following statements is or outro regarding the relief of the ocean? Continental shelf is the seaward extension of the continent. The width of the continental shelf is uniform throughout the world. Continental shelf is part of the continent submerged due to a rising sea level. So here, statement A is correct, B is false, C is correct. Therefore, the right option is option 3, A and C only. Please look at the picture over here. So this is the ocean, this is land. So now let us see what is continental shelf. Continental shelf is in fact the seaward extension of the continent from the shoreline to the continental edge mark. So here this is the seaward extension of the continent and this is called as continental shelf. So the continental shelf is thus a shallow platform. If you look at the picture over here, this is shallow and compared to the other parts of the ocean. So this is a shallow platform and the width of this shallow platform varies greatly. It is not uniform. It varies from a few miles in the North Pacific. So in the North Pacific Ocean, it's only few miles. In the North Pacific, it's only few miles while it is greatest. The width is usually the greatest in uh, the Arctic Siberia where the width of 750 miles have been recorded. So the width of the continental shelf is not uniform and also this continental shelf can also be considered as part of the continent itself that has been merged due to a raising sea level. So since the sea level has raised, a part of the continent gets submerged and it becomes continental shelf. However, when at the continent edge, at the edge of the continent, if you look at the picture over here, at the edge of the continent, the gradient increases suddenly. So this gradient here, it is like this, over here, it is like this. So this particular part is known as continental slope. And here, the depth of the ocean is explored at this particular point over here and this is known as ocean deep so the relief of the ocean consists of continental shelf continental slope the deep sea plain and ocean deep deep sea plain is nothing but the undulating plain lying two to three miles below the sea level and it covers about two-thirds of the ocean floor Third question says, consider the following statements regarding continental shelf. The shallowness of the continental shelf enables sunlight to penetrate through the water. Continental shelves are rich in plankton. So both the statements are correct here. Therefore, the right option is option 3, both A and B. As you have seen in the last picture, the continental shelf has shallowness. It is not deep when compared to the other parts of the ocean and thus it enables sunlight to penetrate through the water. As sunlight is able to penetrate through the water, there will be growth of plankton at the continental shelves. Next question says, which of the following statements is or outro regarding continental shelf? Continental shelves are the richest fishing grounds in the world. Most of the world's largest seaports are located on the continental shelf. Some continental shelves are made because of wave erosion. No continental shelf has been created due to deposition of materials. So here statement A, B and C are correct. D is false. Therefore, the right option is option to A, B and C only. Since sunlight is able to penetrate through the continental shelf this encourages the growth of minute plants and other microscopic organisms and thus they are rich in plankton as i have told you in the last question itself so plankton is the source on which millions of surface and bottom feeding fishes thrive therefore the continental shelves are the richest fishing grounds in the world due to good amount of growth of plankton and also most of the world's largest seaports are located on the continental shelf. So examples are Southampton, Southampton, Hamburg, Southampton, Hamburg, Rotterdam, Rotterdam, 
Hong Kong, Hong Kong, Singapore, Singapore. So these are some of the world's largest, greatest seaports that are located on the continental shelves. Some continental shelves are made of wave erosion. Some smaller continental shelves could have been caused by wave erosion where the land is being eroded by the sea. And please remember that conversely, the continental shelves might have also been formed by the deposition of land derived or river derived materials, land derived or river born materials on the offshore terrace. Fifth question says, consider the following statements regarding relief of the ocean. Continental slope is formed at the edge of the continental shelf. The abrupt change of gradient marks the beginning of the continental slope. So both the statements are correct here. Therefore, the right option is option 3, both A and B. As we are seeing in the picture, if this is continental shelf, then the change in the gradient marks the beginning of the continental slope and continental slope is usually formed at the edge of the continental shelf so it is formed at the edge of the continental shelf and the abrupt change in the gradient marks the beginning of the continental shelf sixth question says which of the following statements is or are true regarding deep sea plane Deep sea plain is an undulating plain lying two to three miles below the sea level. It covers about 90% of the ocean floor. It is generally termed the abyssal plain. Here statement A is correct, B is false, C is correct. Therefore, the right option is option 3, A and C only. So, the relief of the ocean floor consists of continental shelf, continental shelf, continental slope, continental slope and then the deep sea plane deep sea plane and finally it consists of ocean deep so these are the four features of the ocean relief one two three and four so now we are speaking of deep sea plane it is an undulating plane lying two to three miles below the sea level so it is a plane it is an undulating plane that is lying two to three miles below the sea level it covers about two thirds of the ocean floor, not 90%, but two thirds. So approximately 66.6%. And it is also generally termed the abyssal plain. Seventh question says, consider the following statements regarding oceans. Most of the deepest ocean trenches are located in the midst of the oceans. The greatest known ocean deep is the Tonga Trench. Both these statements are false here therefore the right option is option for neither a nor b most of the deepest oceans or several deep trenches are not located in the midst of the ocean but they are often found close to the continents very 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 important piece of information so you could get confused that's why i have added this question most of the deepest ocean trenches deepest ocean trenches they are not found in the middle of the sea they are not found in the midst of the oceans but they are found closer to the continents so they are found usually closer to the continents and the greatest known ocean deep is the mariana trench so it's the mariana trench which is in the pacific ocean eighth question says consider the following pairs ocean deep ocean Mindanao, Japanese, Tonga, Pacific Ocean, Atlantic Ocean, Indian Ocean. So here the right option is option one, only one pair because all these three are located in Pacific Ocean. So Mindanao, Pacific Ocean is the only pair that is correctly matched over here. Consider the ninth question now. Which of the following statements is or not true regarding ocean deposits? Muds are terrigenous deposits. Oozes are pelagic deposits red clay is believed to be an accumulation of volcanic dust so all the three statements are correct here therefore the right option is option for a b and c generally speaking the oceanic deposits of the ocean floor are classified into muds oozes and then clays so these are the three classifications of the ocean deposits muds are terrigenous deposits because they are derived from land and are mainly deposited on the continental shelves. They are mainly deposited on the continental shelves. The muds are referred to as blue, green or red. Blue, green or red mud 
depending on the chemical content. The oozes are the pelagic deposits because they are derived from the oceans itself. They are made of the shelly and skeletal remains of marine microorganisms. Shelly and skeletal remains of marine or microorganisms with calcareous or siliceous parts. Oozes have a very fine floor like textures. They are very fine as well as they have floor like texture and either occur as accumulated deposits or float about in suspension. The red clay is the other classification. These occur mainly as red clays in the deeper parts of the ocean basins and are particularly abundant in the Pacific Ocean. Pacific Ocean. Why? Because red clay is believed to be an accumulation of volcanic dust blown out from volcanoes during volcanic eruptions and Pacific Ocean is known for volcanic eruptions. That's why we find red clay more concentrated in the Pacific Ocean. Last question for the day says, consider the following statements regarding oceans. Isohaline is a line joining places having an equal degree of salinity. Isobaths are contours making depths below sea level. So both the statements are correct here. Therefore, the right option is option 3, both A and B. Isohaline is nothing but a line joining all the places having an equal degree of salinity. So if you take any place on an isohaline, let us say this point A here, point B here, then both the point lying on this line will have equal degree of salinity, equal degree of salinity. And isobaths are contours marking depths below sea level. So similar to isohaline, isobaths are nothing but the lines, but they mark depths below sea level. So if you consider this point here, point C, and this point here, point D on an isobath, then both these points will have similar depth below the sea level. Say if point C is 300 feet below sea level, then all the points on this line will have depth uh, below the sea level as 300 feet. So even D will have 300 feet as the sea level depth. So this is all about physical geography in this video. Please try to solve the multiple choice questions before watching the video for solutions. Thank you.